In this video I'm going to look at three typical problems that uh, one encounters when studying maximum minimum problems. And these all involve cones. And the first one is uh, we have a right circular cone inscribed in a sphere with a given radius 15 centimeters. And we have to find the dimensions of the cone that has the largest volume that we can fit into this, uh, into this sphere. Now, this is my cone in the sphere. Uh, the radius of the sphere is 15 centimeters, so this is the radius here. Uh, the radius of the cone is y. And x is the distance from the base of the cone up to the center of the sphere. So the cone, the formula for volume of a cone is 1 third pi r squared h. Uh, the y is the radius of the cone, so I'm just putting a y squared in there. And the height of the cone is x plus 15. Now I have to get this in terms of one variable, so I come down here, uh, easy Pythagorean relationship, x squared plus y squared equals 15 squared. If I bring the x squared to the other side, I have a replacement for y squared. So in this expression up here, in place of the y squared, I'm putting in 225 minus x squared. So now I've got it all in terms of one variable. I want to take a derivative of this, so I'm going to multiply this all out first. Uh, I could use the product rule on this, um, but I decided to multiply it out, get it in the form of a polynomial. Then when I took the derivative of that, uh, don't worry about the one-third pi on the front, that's just a, a constant. You can just take the derivative of the polynomial inside. When you put that equal to zero, the only part of this that could make that zero is the, uh, is the expression in the bracket. Divided that by negative three. I got an expression here that I could factor. If you can't factor uh, the expression you get here, you're going to have to use the uh, quadratic formula. In this case, however, I've got these two factors. One value for x is negative 15, which I uh, immediately reject, and the other value is, is 5 from this bracket here. If I now want the, uh, the value for y, I'll just come over here. Uh, put the 5 in for the x and then take the square root. So my height is 20 centimeters, that's the 5 plus the 15, and the, uh, the y value here, which I've just reduced uh, to its radical form, uh, is the, the radius of the cone. Now the second problem, again, it's a cone-shaped uh, paper cup. Uh, I've given a volume, fixed the volume, and we want to find the height and radius of the cup that require the least amount of paper to make. In other words, we have to minimize the surface area. So uh, here's my constraint. The volume, 36 cubic centimeters. And the formula for volume, one-third area of the base times the height. Uh, I multiplied through by 3 to get rid of the fraction and isolated the r squared. The other thing that I can see up here is there's a Pythagorean relationship. Um, s squared equals r squared plus h squared. And I can now get the s also in terms of h by replacing the r squared with what I've got here. Uh, the 108 over uh, pi h. So that means when I'm looking at the, the formula for the surface area, which is pi rs, you see, I don't even have an h in this, but it was the easiest thing for me to get the surface area in terms of, to get one variable. If I tried to get uh, r just in terms of s, uh, I was always stuck with this h in here. So that's why I got replacements for the R and the S in terms of H. Um, when I put them in there, of course, I had to put uh, root signs over them because these were the R squared and the S squared. Multiplying this out, 
it's it's an ugly looking thing, but a root times a root, you can just put it in one root um, uh, root symbol. Uh, this times itself, I just put the squares on there, I didn't multiply the 108 times 108. That times h squared is 108 h over pi. I rewrote this. Um, I wrote this to the half because I'm getting ready to take a derivative here. I also took this h squared on the bottom and wrote it as h to the negative 2. Uh, I want this as a simple polynomial on the inside because when I take the derivative of this now, uh, this is rather long but, but, but it's just the, uh, the chain rule. The half comes down, reduces this to negative a half, times the derivative of what's inside. So the only thing you have to concentrate on here is bringing the, the minus 2 down, reducing that to negative 3, and this is just a constant times h, so I get 108 over pi. And when I put this equal to 0, you see this is on the bottom, so I'm not concerned with that, I'm not concerned with the half pi out in front. The only thing that could possibly make this expression equal to 0 would be this expression on the end, and that's what I put equal to zero in this line here. And the rest of this is just trying to isolate the, uh, the h from this. I moved this to the other side, and I rewrote it. I just feel more comfortable with uh, positive exponents on my variables, so I, when I moved it over, I just moved the h to the bottom. Cross multiplied, uh, divided through by 108 pi squared, and uh, went to my calculator at this point, just took the cube root of this and got the height, which is 4.1 centimeters. If I want the, uh, the radius, I just come back here and uh, put my h value in and take the square root, and that will give me my radius, which is 2.9 centimeters. So it's always a matter of trying to get what you want to maximize or minimize in terms of one variable and that's what all of this was about right here trying to get surface area eventually in terms of age.